I have a confession. I was wrong about Carson Wentz. The good player, great player, above average quarterback in the NFL. But I thought that this season was going to be a season where he gets back to his MVP status that he was at in 2017, or at least play like he was somewhat close to reaching that level. And then after I watched that Sunday night game against the Dallas Cowboys, watched it in full, went back and watched some of the plays that he made, I I don't think he's capable of going back to that MVP status like he was in 2017. Something has to happen. Something has to prove me wrong in order for that to, for me to change my, my mind on that. But I believe that Carson Wentz at this point, very good player, good quarterback, talented I love him, and I don't think at any point he should be benched. That's No, I, I'm not saying he should be benched for Jalen Hurts. I'm saying he's not going to be one of the elite quarterbacks this season, maybe even next season, maybe even this, maybe for his whole entire career. And I'll explain that in, in, in a little bit right here. For a second, I thought it was because of the lack of talent on that Philadelphia Eagles team. You saw the injuries that they had. And in this game against the Dallas Cowboys, they didn't have all their players. I understand. But I really wanted to analyze. I wanted to, to, to really look back because I, w- I was watching that game against the Dallas Cowboys and I thought to myself, Carson Wentz really does not look that good. There has to be, something has to be wrong here. What's going on with Carson Wentz? So I went back courtesy of NFL Game Pass, went back and watched all the plays that Carson Wentz made. And what I noticed when I was watching those plays was that he was making some pretty bad decisions. It looked like as if Carson Wentz was trying to put the team on his back and do way too much to make up for his team not having much. And I'll explain that in a sec. By the way, I'm no NFL scout. I'm not. Okay, so this is just what my eyes tell me just from being a fan of the NFL for so long, for uh, over a decade and watching game after game every single Sunday. I, I, I try to watch every single game, but this is just what my eyes tell me. So Carson Wentz, let me break down some some plays that he had, some mistakes that he had. There was a fumble call, caused by Leighton Vander Esch, the Cowboys linebacker, in the uh, second quarter. That was not his fault. That was just bad protect, protection by the offensive line. But in the first quarter, there was another fumble that Carson Wentz gave up, and that was completely his fault. I don't know if you guys watched that game or remember this play, but it was a play when it was, I believe, second and long, second and 16, something around that nature. He had a lot of time in the pocket, and I get it. It was a coverage sack, good good defense by the Dallas Cowboys. But instead of throwing the ball away and just giving your team another chance on an extra third and long uh, down, he rolled out of the pocket to his left, away from the opposite throwing hand, tried to get some more room, some more time, got rolled out of the pocket, not his biggest strength. And instead of throwing the ball away, even when you're outside of the pocket to save the play, he decided to try to heave the ball, try to make a play happen. And while he did that, he got sacked in the process. Okay, that's fine. He got sacked in the process. And when he hit the ground, before he hit the ground, he gave up the ball. Poor ball ball protection by Carson Wentz in that instance and big mental mistakes that Wentz you know would love to have that play back and that was completely his fault that turnover was his fault giving up that ball giving up the turnover on that fumble and that sack when he could have thrown the ball away a couple of interceptions that he had in that game both by Trayvon Diggs the the brother of Stephon Diggs there was an interception where he was uh, throwing it to Hightower on a deep pass Hightower was kind of running towards the right side of the field. Carson Wentz did a poor job of leading his receiver in the direction that he was heading. Instead, while he was trying to hit the, uh, or, or roll out to the right side of the field, Carson Wentz just threw it straight up, straight in that direction, not towards the right, but straight. And that caused the uh, high tower to readjust, try to make a play. And at that point, he was just underneath the ball uh, but Trayvon Diggs had a, a step ahead of him, and he was able to intercept that. That interception was Wentz's fault. Another interception. This was targeted to Jalen Rager in the red zone. Trayvon Diggs made another interception. But this one, again, rolling out to the right, throwing towards the right. You had Jalen Rager open, was boxing out Trayvon Diggs. 
just had to be accurate with that pass, roll out to the right, throw that pass, throw an interception. Instead, threw a little bit out of the reach of Jalen Rager and into the hands of Trayvon Diggs, who was past Tra- Jalen Rager, and it was an interception. Another interception that was Carson Wentz's fault. So I, I'm bringing this up because I really, in my head, I, I, I thought for the longest time it's because of the lack of talent. It's because of the receivers not being that great, because of maybe those plays were mis- miscommunication. Maybe they're just not on the same page. I don't know. But from what I was seeing in that Sunday night game and what I could tell was that it was Carson Wentz who was underperforming in that game. So what does that mean? First off, if you play fantasy football and you have Carson Wentz on your team, that does not mean that you need to bench him and that you need to drop him. Not saying that at all. I still believe that he's capable in some games, if the matchup is is right, of putting up 20 or more fantasy points. I believe there was a string of, before the Dallas Cowboys game, there was a string of five games where he had over, or he was averaging 23 fantasy points a game. Don't give up on Carson Wentz and fantasy football. But I believe, like I said earlier, that Wentz is trying to make up for the lack of talent on this team by doing way too much and it's just a matter of when it's just just ease it you're a great talent you're, you're you're amazing we drafted drafted you first round pick two in 2016 because of your talent level we know that you can get it done just ease back just a bit you don't have to do way too much that sack and that fumble on second and 16 you were trying to do way too much when you could just throw the ball away give your team another chance so he is trying to make up for uh the the lack of talent on that Eagles team. However, the question is, do we believe that he's going to get back to that MVP season or that level that he was at in 2017? At this point, if I had to pick a yes or a no, it's going to be a no. And that pains me to say it because number one, I love Carson Wentz and I want him to succeed. And number two, I believe he was going to. And this just, I'm out here saying that I was wrong about that. I really do. So, Above average quarterback, yeah, he's going to have some seasons where he's going to be a top 10 quarterback, and he's the best choice for the Philadelphia Eagles, and he can lead them to at least a Super Bowl. But as far as winning another MVP award and being in the likes of the conversation of people like Russell Wilson or Patrick Mahomes or uh, Tom Brady or Drew Brees or any of those good quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers, in that conversation, I don't know. I think he's a, a, a tier or two down from those players. So, Definitely interact with us and let me know your thoughts on Carson Wentz.